Hello world. Welcome to uh, Life of the Artist, David Alexander English. Episode, I don't know. Today is October 20 something. <laughs> I think it's the 20th actually. And um, Venice Beach, California, the veritable edge of Western civilization. And uh, this is a little update on what's been going on uh, since the cancer diagnosis on September 19th. So, uh, but last we spoke, uh, this week I was scheduled on the 17th Thursday to do a PET scan and I was debating about whether or not to go through with it and uh, no drum roll I, I did and it was uh, kind of if you've ever had a CT scan it's very similar except they inject you with this radioactive goop and fortunately this goop has only a, a half-life of about two hours so um, it all worked out because I went there I went there a little early all right a little backup so they called me the day before to say uh, your appointments at 1130 um, and I'm like uh, that's good to know because the paper I have says one o'clock it said well we're moving up everything I'm like great Great. And they said, make sure you, that you don't eat any fruit or any, uh, like, fruit. I was on my way to the kitchen to get to make a smoothie that I've been looking forward to. <laughs> uh, you know, this is after um, I completed the, the colon, liver, gallbladder cleanse on Monday. And um, so I got that working for me. And I postponed the... Uh, the kidney cleanse until after until after the um, this PET scan so I started that um, I'm on my third day of that today right in the middle so if I seem a little spacey that could have something to do with it uh, it's a kidney detox um, so It's a good thing they told me about the fruit, no fruit thing, because that would have, uh, I guess the carrier for that goop is some kind of sugar-based thing and it would have messed up the, the scan. And the point of the scan was essentially to, uh, this radioactive goop is supposed to highlight every cancer cell in your body, wherever it is, and um, the point of it was to see if, it's, if it had spread anywhere else than, you know, in my throat. Uh, so, um, I didn't see any doctors, I just saw technicians, we did it, it went without a hitch, and um, luckily it was over by 1.30, and it feels really good to have it behind me. Um, I got a, a message yesterday, uh, I actually spoke with somebody to, they want to set up a, an appointment to speak to an oncologist on the, uh, I think it's the 6th of November. Uh, my next uh, doctor's appointment is the, um, I have a, uh, a meeting with my, my primary on, what is it, the uh, 28th. And so, the saga continues. Um, I feel great. I hope I look good. <laughs> uh, right after this, I'm going to trim my beard a little bit. Um, and uh, so on Monday, Monday was a holiday. It was Indigenous People's Day. Uh, I, I met with a brother who is a cancer survivor and an acupuncturist at the recommendation of my good friend, Joseph Lockerbie. And um, I wanna take a moment to, to do a little shout-outing, a 
if I can to people that have kind of gone above and beyond. Uh, Lee Scheibel, uh, Tessa, <laughs> Joseph Lockerbie, <laughs> right? Um, just to name a few, Rita Obermeyer, John Riley, <laughs> you know, um, Heidi Hanko. Uh, so far, so good. And uh, of course, my sister Chris. Just for being my sister Chris. <laughs> um, you know, it, they say that in times like this, you find out who your friends are. And unfortunately, you also find out who your friends aren't. And uh, I won't go too deep into that. But in my, the first thing that I, in the first one of these I did, I, I mentioned how, you know, some people, when they get a chance to, uh, when something like this comes up, they, they take the opportunity to kind of like give you their philosophy and and give you a, a snap critique of, of everything you've ever done wrong in your life or whatever. And um, and even though, you know, they, they, they say and they, they feel in their heart that they, that they love you, they don't, they don't necessarily see that maybe now is not the best time to, uh, to take advantage of that. Um, so, uh, there, at this time, I got to tell you, there, there are moments when I, I just, I, I've got a, an energy level. My energy is focused on one thing. And if whatever I'm presented with is not in alignment with that, I, I have to cut it short. And I've cut some people short. And I, that's the way it goes. That's just how it has to be right now. It's called self-preservation. Um, I'm a really, really keenly, especially after doing a month's worth of, of deep cleansing. I'm uh, my, you know, I, I think I weigh somewhere in the low 180s right now. Um, so it's, which is, you know, I've probably lost about 15 pounds. And I feel really good. But, um, like I said, I, I I don't have a lot of, of energy to spare. It's all focused on, on one thing and one thing only right now, and that is, you know, more of this, more of this preciousness we call life, right? And uh, eliminating any obstacles to that. Um, dissolving this thing in my neck, dissolving this thing in my throat, that's my focus. And I will, I've, I've tried a lot of alternative suggestions of people and everything like that. Um, most of those things have probably helped boost my immune system, which is great, um, for the next phase, which is actually doing something to eliminate this thing in my throat. Um, if it doesn't if it doesn't look like it's adding to that, you know, if it, if it doesn't look like it's helping to make it s smaller, then, you know, I've, I've got a, a short window. So, um, yeah, so I went to this uh, meeting with this uh, acupuncturist brother and Larry and he had had uh, cancer when he was 21, diagnosed with, when he was 21. And uh, he started, you know, doing chemo and everything. And he, he had to stop because it was just, it was too much. And he started doing the sort of what I, the stuff that I've been doing. And then he started doing the chemo when he felt good to do the chemo. And it was against their protocols and everything, but he did it at his own pace. And eventually after seven months, he, he had, he got rid of it. And we had a, a wonderful conversation. And what came out of it, the most important thing that came out of that conversation for me, and the reason why I'm, I'm relating it to you is, 
is, you know, I, I communicate to him that I, I really feel like my, my immune system, uh, all signs point to my immune system being really strong. And I think it's probably as strong as it's ever been in my life. And in part because of a lot of the cleansing that I've done and healing that I've done, um, you know, changing diet and whatnot over the past month or so, eliminating all white foods and, and uh, unnatural sugars and all that kind of stuff. Um, but mostly following my intuition as to what to do and what not to do. Uh, following me in a guidance month. Um, but he asked this, this magnificent question, which was, it's interesting that your, you know, your, your immune system seems to be really strong, but your immune system hasn't reacted to this cancer. And that to me was like, kind of put it all in a nutshell because my immune system is not seeing this like it should be. It should be seeing this as a, as a foreign body and it's not reacting to it. And so that launched me into, in a direction to um, you know, do some research, but also to go within and, and, and uh, be open to receiving more information, more intuitional information about what, what I need to do in order to turn that around. And this gets into like what I think is going on. Um, uh, I'll, I'll spare you the blow by blow, but bottom line is this. About three years ago, I was coming back from Burning Man and I went to a hot spring. In that hot spring, I knew when I left that hot spring, there was something weird. And I, um, within a couple of days, I started to get um, this sinus infection. And I just figured, you know, it'll, it'll go away, it'll heal itself, whatever, and it did. And it got worse, and it got to the point where my, my actual phlegm that would come up in the morning from this sinus infection didn't even taste like mine. And I'm like, that's not good. Um, and to make a longer story shorter, I had that for probably about two and a half years or so. And no matter what I did, you know, it diet I tried all these I tried the master cleanse I tried all this stuff and it didn't go away right so in essence whatever that was whether it was a virus or it could have been the the HPV virus that I picked up in that hot spring which you know the hot spring was body temperature basically so it was a pretty good environment for that to happen and you know that HPV virus can be transmitted by bodily fluids and whatnot so you know there there you have it if it was a virus or a fungus or whatever, whatever it was, it, it found, um, it had within it the ability to make itself invisible to my immune system because it found a happy place. It found my sinuses. And no matter what I did, it, I couldn't get rid of it through my own immune system. So it was invisible to my immune system. And this, so then a year ago, um, just before on the way on the way to Burning Man, uh, one of my back teeth lower came out. Within a week, I felt I felt sick right after that. I, within a week, the the I'm pointing the wrong side because this camera is whatever. It's this side on one of the back teeth here, and right below it is where this this swelling started, right? And I thought it was just the 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 um, I thought it was that uh, infection. And I thought it was, you know, it had found uh, the hole that was left by that root had um, food had found a way down into there, created a cavity for itself, and then was was down there having its own little party. And uh, within a when I got back from Burning Man, about two weeks after that, I went to a doctor, and I got. A, uh, a script for uh, doxycycline um, in part because I thought it was a, a, a doxycycline is supposed to be really good for getting rid of funguses and that kind of thing and um, so I went through it 
and um, it got rid of the, the, the sinus infection, right? But it didn't get rid of this, you know? This just got worse over the past nine months. And but, so you see all of this is all in the same area, right? And it's all on the right side, the masculine side, the father's side. And, you know, this is throat chakra issues to do with control and trusting and the truth of the relationship, one's relationship with the divinity and manifesting and all that sort of stuff. And I have issues. <laughs> if you know me personally, I got issues in that general direction, you know? Those are my, those, them's my daddy issues. So, but the key through all of that is that whatever was going on was completely immune to my immune system. I mean, it was, was completely invisible to my immune system. And obviously this cancer is the same, this carcinogen, uh, um, carcinoma is the same thing. It's, it's, it's invisible to the immune system. The good thing is, now I've got this super duper immune system all charged and ready to go, and we know this because, for a couple of reasons. One, remember this, this thing I had on my, that boil I had on my face last week? See how small it is right now? It's, this is just the scar, it's all gone. And that was pretty quick. Good chance that that was a staph infection. When I was in seventh grade, I almost lost my arm to a staph infection. I'm, I've been prone to staph infections. Uh, my whole life and uh, I healed this you know, my body healed this my immune system healed that in like a week and a half um, uh, everything just about everything from that bike accident healed in a matter of weeks all the you know cuts and scrapes and from that um, I've had uh, genital herpes for 30 some odd years and you know if you have herpes at all you know that if you have like if you, get, you start to get the sniffles you can have a, an outbreak right so it's always been a thing that when I when the herpes trips up start you know flares up um, it's either my diet stress or there's something going on biologically you know, there's something else, that, an infection somewhere else in my body. And so it's like, I've always kind of known that the, the herpes would be like a, um, like a, the canary in the coal mine. It would trip up first. Haven't had a herpes outbreak. And so it's, you know, that tells me once again, that given th even all the, through all the stresses of, you know, receiving this diagnosis and all the cleansing and all that kind of stuff all that I've done, no herpes outbreak. That hasn't been triggered. So that once it, these things tell me that, you know, my immune system is, is firing on all cylinders except one, and that one is what we're focused on from here on out. So um, once I kind of came up with, you know, that, that all came to me, uh, I reasoned it all out. Um, one of the things that's recommended for, uh, you know, in the research, there's apparently cancer cells um, uh, create some kind of substance that makes them Ill, uh, um, invisible to immune systems. And there are things that you can take that, um, that inhibit their ability to uh, put those um, those substances that they create to make themselves invisible into your system, and and so uh, one of those things is this stuff called black seed oil, right? And uh, so we got ourselves some of that, and in abundance. And I'm taking goo gobs of it. And um, something said, you know, all this stuff that I'm taking, something said to, like, put it all in one thing, you know? <laughs> and uh, to make a, a topical thing that I can spray into my mouth and put onto this growth in the back of my mouth, right? 
because basically what's happening is that um, this is why I keep saying that there's a certain time frame because if this thing just keeps growing it's at this point it's covering about half my the back of my mouth right so I can still eat and I can still breathe but like when I'm lying down it's very challenging to do that and if it keeps growing then there's not going to be enough you know it can constrict my my uh, I'm basically I, I am basically strangling myself to death slowly and I got to stop doing that we I think we can all agree right and uh, so I need to be seeing this get smaller especially the thing in my mouth and so I made this this what I call a super duper oil <laughs> so um, and I'll just throw out a couple of things that are in it. That black seed oil is one. Um, uh, black walnut is another. Ga garlic oil. Uh, olive leaf oil. Um, uh, the ozone oil, which is basically ozone um, infused olive oil. Uh, we got your. Uh, um, what is it? Frankincense. Um, I don't know. This, this, all this, all this stuff, and it's all pretty vile tasting. <laughs> but uh, desperate times call for desperate measures, as they've I've heard it said before, and this would qualify. So, as you can see, the David still has uh, somewhat of a sense of humor. Um, and uh, still trying to find the you know a good cancer joke. Still haven't found any good cancer jokes, but I'm open. Um, what else? So uh, released the sixth, the sixth chapter episode of Enoch this week, and started working on both number seven and number eight, chapter seven, and chapter eight, and uh, there's a reason for that. It's just it feels good to be working on two at the same time, trying to trying to get this done and get as much of it done as I possibly can under the circumstances. Um, and uh, I'm working, I've been working on this book for seven years called The Natural History of Life and Death. And so I was working on that today. And that feels really wonderful to be getting completed. And the album uh, Cerebral Mind Candy um, is ready to go. I'm just in the process. All of the all of those tracks there's 11 tracks on the album and I was converting them to WAV files last night and I had to listen through them and I, I I what something came to me while I was in the middle I was lying on the bed and I'm listening my arms are spread my legs are spread spread and I I dropped into trance while I'm listening to this and it happened several times while I was listening to these different tracks I would drop into this trance that's like a semi-hypnotic trance and information would come. And one of the things that came was what this was, what this, this work is. And it's, it's kind of like, like um, once you're in that trance, you can get all this information about whatever it is that you need, you know, you, your higher self needs to tell you. And um, it's like these are, these are uh, psychic, psychic healing tools of some kind. And um, yeah, so uh, I'm looking at, I'm hoping to have that um, uploaded and, and uh, to the distributors, uh, the, the uh, what do you call them, uh, streaming services by the end of the week. But um, there's a bit, been a little hitch. The laptop that I 
I use is just uh, it won't turn on and uh, the manuscript for uh, two books and the programs to you know edit this music they're all on that laptop so sometimes hopefully sometime in the next day or so it'll decide that maybe it wants to still be more than a paperweight so there's that um, I'm doing the liver clean, I mean the kidney cleanse uh, detox until Tuesday and then I get to eat real full meals again and uh, I'm, I'm starting to play around with the, the keto or keto diet whatever that is uh, answering this like inner intuitional thing that says you need to eat more meat and fat more fat in your diet less you know I would already cut down on carbohydrates and everything so um, so that's what I'm doing eating a lot of I had I had lamb and pot roast this week and the fat was the best part go go figure you know I just was like can't get enough of that go to the store and I'm like what's the fattest piece of meat you got there you know and so I don't know and lots of avocados um, guacamole making guacamole with the black seed oil by the way and uh, because that stuff is kind of gnarly, but it tasted really good in the guacamole, so we'll do that again. Um, I wanna, I'm trying to cut, cut, beat, get it all in there. Uh, so that's the latest, I think. I, I, if I forgot to mention anybody, my cousin. <laughs> um, Thank you so much, uh, Joyce, Gerald, and Karen. Thank you. And uh, every little bit helps because we don't. You just don't know. You just don't know. Oh yeah, uh, I went to the. Oh man, I went to the county. Uh, they said I had to go through this orientation. To, to receive uh, GR, I decided not to use the GR because you have you have nine months once you start start it going, and uh, it it seemed like I should probably save that in case I really 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 need that, and it's only it's only two hundred and ten twenty dollars, but I I feel like you know I, I should be able to come up with two hundred twenty dollars. I'd rather save it and leave it for somebody else that needs it more than I do. Um, but it turns out, I, after I went through the orientation and everything like that, and I went to sit with the worker and everything, he's like, how old are you? I said, I'm 62. He says, oh, I'm sorry. You didn't have to go through that. You automatically get it if you're over 60. Oh, that's, that's, that was a great two hours of my life. Thank you very much. So. Um, Still waiting to hear on the disability claim and everything. Uh, what else? The good thing was about that meeting, though, I, I did get the the food stamp card, and that's what I'm using to to um, you know buy all the the beets. You know, beets, red foods are really good for the kidneys and liver, right? Supercharging the immune system. Um, yeah, so. Uh, that's what I bought to I, I bought some lamb I haven't bought I haven't bought meat me personally I haven't bought meat in probably close to two decades but this week it was like my body was saying you need to eat some protein and you definitely need to eat some fat my friend and uh, one day this week I was down to one 180.8 180 point <laughs> eight pounds and my, my friend Nikki's like that's about it no more <laughs> no wait you gotta keep some meat on those bones you know so you'll be happy to know today I weigh a little more so I'm not sure why it might be just the the, the, the uh, scale I'm using but it's a good thing I'm you know low low 180s so we're there um, I feel really good the body feels really good um, so, once again, thanks for listening.
and let's have a little little uh, beam time, shall we? Yeah, how do we, how do we do this? Here we go. This is where I get to beam some love at you because I can. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, in case you were wondering, I actually do feel the love. I do feel loved and appreciated and held by all these good thoughts. So there, take that. Love you. Back. <laughs>